He directs the film of your life from conception to death. Okay, so maybe it's not that serious, but Tim Van Patten is a huge person when it comes to directing Sopranos episodes. He directed a whole 21 of them. What do you want me to do about it now? I want to tell you. Tell me what? You the Legend of Tennessee Moltisanti is the episode where Christopher has his first nightmare, and so we see that in both his waking and his dreaming life. Lots of agita. Two definite agendas I got. Hit the topless beaches and see that fucking crater. I don't care what anybody says, I'm there. Here he comes. Hey, come on! Christopher's arc gets thrown a little curveball when he tries heroin for the first time. Get some Imodium. You want to get made? This is no fucking way. Tony wants us to hang with Nino, work out the dock facilities. There's also a lot of deep thought and reflection at the end for all of them. In the car ride on the way back from the airport. This episode is also an important one. A friend of ours is coming in. Furio. I'm making some changes. Furio being here frees you up, frees me up. It's me, then you and Sil together. That's the new pecking order. What about Puss? Pussy reports to you guys. Now, House Arrest is famous for the ending scene. We're right here, outside of Satriali's at the end of the episode. Tony and the guys, they're all talking, shooting the shit, yelling at that dipshit Carmine for going too fast. Holy shit. Look at that. It's a dipshit Carmine again. Sill, go tell him no speeding in the neighborhood. I'm on it. Come on. Tony. Oh, Agent Harris. How you doing? How are you? And this is one of the first times that we see Tony and Agent Harris having more of a friendly relationship. And so as we zoom out, we kind of get a really good big picture view of things. And particularly as we see Puss walking back inside. Grandma? Proshai Lavushka. This is a big death episode, of course, with Livia. But something else that always strikes me as interesting, at the very least, is this poem by Robert Frost, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. I always think ahead to season six, episode six, Live Free or Die. So I'm gonna come back to this later. Like over the river and through the woods to grandma's house we go. Someone here to see you. Director has authorized us to make you an offer. In second opinion, we have another dream scene, and this is at the beginning with Junior. This is another big picture moment for Junior, where we see in his dream all of his thoughts about different things that have occurred over the past couple of years with Tony, Livia, the family. In Amorfu, at the end, someone else is deep in thought. And that's Ralph Cifaretto. At the end of this episode, after this scene, I love how we see Patsy stopping by the store to get some groceries for dinner. It just looks like an otherwise seemingly casual day in suburban North Jersey. Meanwhile, there's this other world very close by where shit is as tense and messy as ever. I loved you. What happens I decide, not you. Now you don't love me anymore, well, that breaks my heart, but it's too fucking bad, because you don't gotta love me. But you will respect me. <laughs> oh 
Massachusetts! <laughs> Christopher, here's another big, big picture vision. Looking down below at the group with the big pig from Satriali's right next to them. Whoever did this is a very powerful episode. In terms of visuals, at the beginning of the episode, we see Ralph sitting in the bathtub. See if he's got some vice aid. And we also see Tony push him against the wall at the hospital. And then later on, we see Tony pushing Ralph up against the cupboard in a very, very, very similar looking position. As Tony's getting up to walk out, he sees on the mirror a picture of Tracy. So this all comes full circle now. Calling all cars, no surprise, another dream sequence, and more cards. And now the news. You want to take it for a test drive? More car rides, more contemplation, more ghosts, the supernatural. Two Tonys at the beginning is like the picture of change. In particular, when Meadow drives up to pick up AJ, she rolls right over the newspaper as she goes up the driveway. To me, that's a huge distinction from the previous seasons where it's always Tony walking down to the driveway to get the paper. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Adriana and Agent San Severino's kid are put together in this one scene. And I feel like that's directing us to think about the fact that that could easily be Adriana, a younger version of Adriana. Kindly remember what we said about interrupting to ask for things while I'm on the telephone. Okay, mom. Hello? It's me. Hi, what's up? Also, you got out a suitcase? That doesn't usually end well. Just ask Adriana later on in long-term parking. Long-term parking, another huge episode. Death, big picture. And at the end in particular, as Tony and Carmela walk up to the land that's gonna be the site of her future spec house, we really just take it all in. Tim Van Patten has spoken about this episode and he specifically mentioned that it would have been so hard to show Adriana getting shot that they couldn't bear to put it in the camera's view. Members only, I mean, Seven Souls montage. What else do I have to say? Okay, well, one more thing about the Seven Souls montage. The director gives the orders. Second, presses the right button. Those directors, they get shit done. Well, this looks like Grandma's house. It's not snowing, but he is ready to sleep. He has a few more miles to go before the big sleep, though. Like over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house we go. Hello. Cold. Endless white. Death. I thought black was death. He has miles to go before he sleeps. In Johnny Cakes, there's this father-son, Tony AJ moment where AJ has to painfully digest and accept the fact he's not like Tony. 
He needs to grow up, but not grow up to be Tony. My stomach hurts. Stupid fucking moron. You realize what could have happened to you? We didn't have connections? Some cop goes by the book and they charge you with attempted murder. Coldstones and Commendatory both have in common this historical aspect. The characters go over to this other place, this other part of the world, and they realize just how small they are in many ways, and how they're really just a tiny, tiny speck in it all. In the olden time, the Sibyl of Kuma was the second most important oracle after Delphi. I thought Delphi was in Greece. Well, the Greeks were here, way before the Romans. And before the Greeks, they were somebody else. And before them, somebody else. But throughout, the human condition is in many ways the same. 1350 AD. You realize some woman just like us wore this? She was probably married, had children. Soprano home movies. More big picture. Ominous. Foreshadowing. Water. Tony sitting and reflecting. A suicide car bomber kills two U.S. soldiers and wounds 25 west of Baghdad. Chasing it. Not my favorite episode, but one of my favorite Carmella lines. You, right, you eat and you play and you pretend like there's not a giant piano hanging by a rope just over the top of your head every minute of every day. You really visualize that and get a sense of just how fragile and how insecure the whole foundation of everything that they have really is the second coming huge episode very intense for the father son particularly at the beginning of this episode we see tony and aj both lying in bed kind of exhausted really not wanting to get up and face the day and it just really goes to show you in this case at least, like father, like son. So, do you have a favorite episode directed by Tim Van Patten? If so, which one? What do you think as a whole? <laughs>